Hi, I'm Viviani. I am a third and I'm in my third and final year in the graduate program here in physics at San Francisco State. Uh, and my name is Bryce Baker. I am in my third semester at San Francisco State. Uh, and we both work in uh, uh, Nuance's lab. Uh, yeah, so this is the Quantum Materials and Energy Devices Laboratory of Professor Nuas. Um, I've been working here for almost four years, and the way that I got here was a very specific and long story that I'm going to um, spare you with. But I have a very non-traditional journey, and uh, and I'm kind of on the other end of the spectrum where I had a pretty traditional journey. I came here right after my undergrad. Uh, and I've spent a year in this lab so far, and I've been enjoying every second of it. So we're gonna give you a tour of our lab, and we have you have our emails, and you're free to contact us if you have any further questions about the lab, about our research, about our journey, and our personal experiences, or uh, about the program. Feel free to uh, contact us, and welcome to our tour. We're nice to be able to open our lab in the times of COVID, so you can see that we have red marks on the floor. Um, our lab has been. Um, split into sessions and there's only one person allowed in each session at a time. Some of our uh, sessions are shared space, so we have to wait for someone to leave for us to be able to come in. So right here, for example, is my session of work. Over there we have Rice and Dan's workstation. Uh, here is our transfer stage with Rice, who's gonna give you a more specific tour later on. Uh, here is our electronics. Station. So this is where we do our soldering, we uh, play with capacitors and resistors and uh, tweak our electronics. Here we have a wire lodging machine. Um, and what else? So over there we have, here we have a probing station. Here we have our chemical station. We also have another lab with the fume hood where we do uh, stronger chemicals, but you know, for simple sonication and cleaning processes. It's okay to use, to be here with our nitrogen tank. Here we have our CBD station. So this is a chemi chemical vapor deposition um, furnace where we can grow monolayers of graphene. Um, here is our postdoc station. And here is our microscope. So this is the, we have another microscope in the lab, but this is our main most important one. This is also a share equipment. So we have to put together a bunch of cleaning procedures and protocols for us to all be able to share this safely. Basically what we do in our lab, we study two dimensional materials and we study exfoliated ones. We do have a furnace where we can grow um, atomic then layers, but most of the time we actually exfoliate from bulk. So to explain a little bit what that means is that we have this material. So I here I have three examples. So for example, this is molybdenum disulfide. So you can see that there's like a rock and it's naturally occurring in nature. And you have this piece of metal here on the top. It's not actually a metal, it's a semiconductor. But I don't know if you can show it here that you, you can already see that it's layered. So we can just peel a piece of, of this with a tweezer and then we sandwich between two pieces of scotch tape here, the amount of tape that we have. Uh, we ended up with something like this. So we exfoliate, we just peel the tapes apart over and over, and then eventually we put it in a piece of substrate and we map, map it on the microscope and you find something that is atomically thin. So I have here, we have, we work in the lab with uh, graphene, which is basically the thin flakes of graphite. So here we have 99% pure graphite flakes. This is frankite, is another layer material that we have. This one is fairly special because instead of having a single atomic layer, it has two, and they are alternately stacked. And this one is the MOS2. We also have some other materials in a desiccator uh, that come from other collaborators and such. Um, but yeah, after uh, this process, then we have the flakes on the substrate. Uh, actually, the substrate is fairly small. So let me get a piece like this, for example. So this is one substrate and there are many, many, many flakes somewhere in a little spot in there that we find in the microscope. So this is the crystal structure of molybdenum disulfide, the ones that I show. So here we have 
an atomic layer, we have the molybdenum in the middle sandwiched between two atoms of sulfide. And if you repeat layers and layers of this, we're gonna have that bulk that we put between the tapes. And then after we peel the tape enough, we ended up with only one single molecule layer of this. And if we're talking about graphene, this is gonna be atomic layer. So one layer is about, of MOS2 is about 0.65 nanometers. Graphene is about 0.2 nanometers, so they're very, very thin which basically means that here we are manipulating matter in an atomic scale with our fingertips and scotch tape. So this is our transfer stage. Uh, on our transfer stage, there's a few moving parts. Uh, first off, we have a light over here that we use for our camera. Our camera is connected to a microscope so we can clearly see what our sample is doing down here. Uh, we can control the temperature of our stage and our our sample by the uh, control box over here. Uh, and the stage itself, we can actually change the position of the stage through these dials over here, their micro positioning. Uh, we can manipulate picking up and putting down the sample with this uh, device here where we can stick in a little metal piece here. Usually there would be some polymer that we would be able to put down and pick up samples with. Uh, this whole entire device can also be controlled through the computer. So we can change the distance from this piece to the stage on the scale of microns to even nanometers. Um, and on top of that, we made all this in, it's a homemade device that we did in lab. All right, so this is our first optical setup, and then we're gonna show the second optical setup that we're putting together downstairs later. Um, here, we're mainly uh, using the setup to do photocurrent spectroscopy or ID measurements. So the first thing that I wanna point out, that we have a cryostat here, and we have a liquid nitrogen tank over there that is connected to this uh, to this cryostat. So we put our samples in there, maybe Bryce, Bryce can uh, zoom in here, that we also have a device here inside right now. So when we turn this on, this is gonna have a flow of liquid nitrogen inside and it's gonna bring our sample down to liquid nitrogen temperature, which is about 77 Kelvin. So we have a microscope, a camera, and we have this whole optical setup. So what's going on here? So the photocurrent spectroscopy works. We have this, uh, this broadband light is a white light that goes through here and goes to this monochromator, which is basically a black box. So this monochromator is gonna filter the light by wavelength that is controlled by a computer. And we're gonna go through, the light's gonna go through here, go inside the microscope, heat our sample. And then our sample is gonna have some photo response from the light. And you see here that we have this blue uh, wire, this blue cord, so our sample is gonna absorb the light and it's gonna have some electrical effects that is gonna go through this wire and it's gonna go all the way there to that box where this blue cord is connected. So in here we have our pens. So now we have a bunch of different electronics. We have a locking amplifier, we have a preamp, we have a, a multimeter, we have a power supply and a bunch of other stuff that we can do uh, several different things. So basically the light goes in, we control the wavelength of the light and we can start vary the wavelength and we measure the current that is being generated by our device by each wavelength of light through this box that is connected straight to our computer. All right, so this is our second optical setup. The first thing that I want to point out is that you see we have a bunch of crates here. There's actually an even larger one out in the corridor. So this is an equipment that we acquired and it's currently not ready. But this equipment is going to allow us to take a lot of different measurements on temperatures of liquid helium, which is about 1 to 2 Kelvin. Um, it also has a magnet of 12 Tesla, so we're going to be able to do a lot of interesting and fascinating things when this thing is ready, which should hopefully be in a few months. Um, and right here we have our second optical setup. Uh, and there's, you can see there's a lot of things going on right now. <laughs> it's we, it allows us to do like a bunch of different stuff, but I'm just gonna explain a little bit very quickly on our Raman system that we're building right now. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is our laser. We use green laser for our Raman experiments here. And this laser, you can see that it's very, very strong. So we need to use goggles for it. And yeah, so this is just to illustrate how it works. This is our laser path. And this is the fiber that is this blue cord. And it goes all the way to an optical setup. So our laser is over there. Maybe not see, not be able to see from the camera. But the laser is going inside this fiber here on the blue wire and then it goes into the system here and then our sample is staying on this stage right here so it goes through this objective that is coming through this hole so what is the path that the light is taking from here to down to the sample so if you look here we have the lasers going here then we have a beam splitter right here that is going to change the laser to this angle and it's going to go here then we have another one that is going to change right here when we get to this mirror over here, it flips our laser through here and it goes down this way and down to our sample. It hits our sample, our sample has some optical response from the light and the optical response of the light from the sample goes back up and it goes back here where it goes through this mirror and then it bounces off this way. So here we have the, our spectrometer, which is our detector, is going through this black optical fiber here or we have our camera so if we leave this mirror over here in then our late our signal coming from the sample is going to hit here and it's going to bounce through the camera where we can see in our computer or if we actually want to take the measurement we're going to take this one out and the light is going to come from here straight to our detector and we can move these mirrors around to change the laser path to the detector or the light that we want to use at the time so this is a very versatile uh, setup. It's a little bit difficult to work with because we have all of these moving parts. So it requires some, some amount of I don't know, training and be able to see here for a while and figure out how the moving parts work. But it's also very rewarding when you actually have a sample that we fabricated upstairs and we bring here, we have all of these moving parts and we make it work and we acquire some data which often gives us some very interesting physics.